This is possibly the most hotly debated topic in the crypto industry, and it's really polarizing. There are people that love proof of work and hate proof of stake, and those that love proof of stake and hate proof of work. Hi, I'm Amy James, and welcome back to What Kind of Internet Do You Want? One of the most important aspects of blockchain technology is the security of the ledger. The way the decentralized network of computers is able to verify blockchain transactions and determine which branch or version of the blockchain is correct. The security is maintained and enforced by a consensus algorithm. The consensus algorithm used for Bitcoin is proof of work, and we did a video all about it, which we will link here and in the description if you haven't checked it out yet. But other consensus algorithms have since been developed. The most well-known consensus algorithm besides proof of work is called proof of stake. It functions really differently than proof of work and has had a really polarizing effect on the crypto community. There are ardent supporters and detractors of each system. So today we're going to talk all about what proof of stake is, why it was introduced, how it works, and of course, we'll discuss some of the advantages and disadvantages that it offers. But before we start, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel, and let's get into it. So what is proof of stake? Proof of stake is a mechanism used to verify that the latest transactions in a blockchain are all valid before they are permanently added to the chain. It was conceived to resolve some of the perceived problems of proof of work. The consensus aspect of proof of work requires powerful computers to run billions or even trillions of computations for every block that is confirmed to the chain. And of course, running all of those computers requires energy. The Bitcoin network requires somewhere between 120 and 240 billion kilowatt hours per year. That is more than the electricity used by the entire country of Argentina or Australia. So naturally, people worry about the environmental impact this kind of electricity usage could have. And I completely understand that concern. On a personal level, I take my environmental impact very seriously. I even went so far as to have a zero waste wedding. But it's important to consider the energy usage issue in context. According to a recent White House report, proof of work mining is responsible for approximately 0.3% of emissions globally, which is basically a rounding error. And some analysts suggest that compared to the legacy financial system, the energy consumption of Bitcoin is many, many more times efficient. The energy usage remains a hotly debated issue, but two things are uncontested. Proof of stake consensus uses far less energy, and the fear of proof of work's energy consumption has been a major driving force behind the development and adoption of proof of stake. Another concern some people have with proof of work is that the specialty hardware required to maintain the system and the energy required to run it costs money. Lots of it. Also, there are a limited number of factories that manufacture the specialty hardware. So the potential danger is that the high costs and the limited hardware availability could mean that fewer and fewer players will be able to participate, resulting in the consolidation of network security providers. And if that were to happen, the network would be smaller and more centralized, which is the opposite of what you want with a decentralized network. Proof of work is also slower than proof of stake because of how the mechanics of the consensus protocols operate. In proof of work, miners are competing to confirm blocks. To ensure that the competition is fair, the network needs a minimum amount of time to relay information to nodes around the world. Whereas with proof of stake, the validator of the next block is determined by the consensus algorithm. So the competitive aspect and the time it requires isn't an issue. And this allows the network to confirm blocks more quickly. So for these reasons and many more, Ethereum, Solana, Cardano, and Tezos, and Dozens of others use proof of stake for their consensus algorithm. So now let's talk about how it works. Some proof of stake networks have variations on some of the details that we're going to talk about, but in general, this is how it works. 
Proof of stake users lock up or stake an amount of coins in their wallet as collateral to ensure that they behave honestly and validate transactions correctly. These users are called stakers and they serve the same purpose that miners do in a proof of work network. They validate transactions and create new blocks in the chain. The staker's wallet is connected to the network, but their coins cannot be used or removed until the relevant block is validated. Just like with proof of work, stakers must authenticate the previous and current transactions. And if a staker behaves dishonestly and validates bad transactions that are not in consensus with the rest of the network, that user will have some of their stake slashed. That's a way to say confiscated, and they won't be permitted to validate any future transactions. Whereas in proof of work, the miner that first produces a valid hash confirms the next block and earns the block reward. In proof of stake, the staker that validates the next block and receives the block reward is deterministically chosen by the consensus algorithm. Typically, the algorithm favors bigger stakeholders to win more frequently so that the more you stake, the more you earn, which is intended to encourage validators to have a vested interest in the accuracy and success of the blockchain. So proof of stake requires less energy consumption, doesn't require specialized hardware, and can increase transaction speed when compared to the proof of work model. So does that mean it's better? Let's talk about proof of work versus proof of stake, which is better. This is possibly the most hotly debated topic in the crypto industry, and it's really polarizing. There are people that love proof of work and hate proof of stake, and those that love proof of stake and hate proof of work. In my opinion, there's a place for both of them, and which one is better depends entirely on what it's being used for. We already talked about the benefits of proof of stake, like reduced energy consumption and increased transaction speed, so let's quickly talk about some of the issues that it has. The security of a proof of stake system is connected to the amount of value that's staked in the system. If there isn't much staked, then the network is more vulnerable to manipulation. This isn't as much of a concern for large and popular networks like Ethereum, Solana, and Cosmos, because there are millions of dollars of value staked in these systems. But for new networks that don't yet have a lot of stakeholders, it could be easy for one bad actor to dominate the field and commit fraudulent transactions. For example, if a network only had a million dollars of staked value, it could be manipulated for just $500,000, which is a lot of money, but also not when it comes to the crypto industry. Another issue is that proof of stake validators are selected deterministically by the consensus algorithm. While this appears to be random, Computers are not actually capable of choosing something at random, so it's deterministic, whereas proof of work is truly random because validators compete to be selected. So while it hasn't happened yet, theoretically, a dedicated attacker could figure out how to use the proof of stake algorithm to predict the next sequence of validators and then use that knowledge to game the consensus system and manipulate the network in their favor. User entry cost can also be a potential drawback to proof of stake. Whereas with proof of work, anyone can participate by buying a mining rig for a few thousand dollars or even renting one for less than a hundred dollars a day and then contribute to the security of the network by competing to earn coins. With proof of stake networks, they typically require a minimum value amount to stake. So for instance, validators on the Ethereum network must stake 32 ETH and leave them locked up for an extended period in order to participate, which at the current token price is over $30,000. But this doesn't apply to all proof of stake networks. Some require stakeholders to put up as little as one coin to participate or do not demand that validators keep their tokens locked up for a fixed period of time at all. Each proof of stake network determines where to set their buy-in ante, and they try to find the right balance between security, accessibility, and decentralization. There have also been experiments with alternative versions of proof of stake, such as delegated proof of stake, in which users vote on who will validate blocks and then share the rewards democratically, leased proof of stake, where users can lend their coins to a validator to increase their chances of receiving the block reward, which they then split, 
and hybrid proof of stake, which alternates between proof of work and proof of stake to produce blocks. If you'd like us to make a video that goes into detail about any of these, leave us a comment down below. And that's it for today. If you learned something about proof of stake, please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel and share it on social media. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.